question mark? Oh, it's a hard hitting question. This is what happened to Team Rar. This is going to be a very different video than you would normally see on this channel because for the first time, you'll hear what really happened to Team Rar from all four of us. Let's go. My name's Lizzie Capri, also known as Liz. It's what pretty much everyone calls me. How did you get into all of this? Where did it all start for you? It all started when I met Carter. I'm trying to like separate the two of like my relationship with him and then our work relationship, but it's really difficult to because they're so intertwined. Sure. It all started when Carter and I met, started dating in like 2014. We did a lot of projects together in college too. And I think that's kind of when our work dynamic started. And then after college, I got a job at LinkedIn. He got a job at, at UPenn. He was working as like a lab assistant. My name is Carter Sher. In 2016, I just graduated college. I landed kind of an intermediate job at the University of Pennsylvania with a friend. And during that process, working on self-driving cars and coding, me and my brother started picking up the camera and started making different YouTube videos just on the weekend and just kind of feeling it out. Basically, Steven moves back home and then Carter sees that he's trying to do YouTube and he kind of gets involved, I think. I grew up watching YouTube ever since 2009 when I learned about it in high school and watched it like every single day. Like definitely didn't, you know, study as much as I should have because I was watching a lot of YouTube. And when my brother kind of showed me like, yeah, there's, you know, PewDiePie obviously is like a full-time YouTuber. There's actually other people out there that took this as a career path and you don't have to be the number one YouTuber in the world for it to work. And so Carter was like keeping me in the loop on all this. So that kind of opened my eyes and I switched my focus from robots and self-driving cars to YouTube. And he was like, oh yeah, like I think we can really do this. That's so cool. How can I help? I wanna get involved. Which kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier when we did a lot of projects in school together. He would always like build stuff and then I would help him document it. Carter starts getting involved and then they start kind of iterating different videos and- Who are these people? How does it work? I just started absorbing as much as I could. I kind of treated it like an algorithm. I was just thinking, if I can make a car drive by itself, I should be able to figure out how to make an entertaining YouTube video. And we just kind of like methodically went through it. We just tried YouTube videos and they were not good. They were not successful at all. Slowly but surely just got made slightly better and better YouTube videos. What was the first video you remember doing well? Oh, I knew you were gonna ask that question. This was the video at my parents' house where I wanted to learn how to do a backflip in my backyard. It's something I actually already learned many years prior, but I never filmed or anything. So we had this huge ramp that I built years ago and we just had to resurface it. It was a vlog style. We had a cool payoff. That video popped off and it was the first one that went to like a million views, which is insane. We were shocked at like 25,000 views, 50,000, 75,000. It kept going. Every day it just didn't stop. 100,000, a few hundred thousand. It went over a million views pretty quickly. And I think that video now sits at over like 16 million. It's still like a, a pretty big video. This was Steven's channel? Yeah, this is still Steven's channel. Like on my time off, I just helped with whatever they did. Whatever you could remote. Anything, yeah. Like I would literally go to Michael's and make like share the love shirts and stuff like that, yeah. And I would mail out those play button keychains and stuff like that. And Carter would 3D print them at UPenn. It's actually really cute to think about. So after a few successful videos all happening in the course of about a month, we had our first real paycheck, about $20,000. And that split between me and my brother, even if it was a fluke, even if it was more than usual, I'm still thinking I'm getting paid $12 an hour at my current job. This is more than that, like it'll pay rent. And so I took that to my boss, I showed him, I said, look at the data. Our views spiked, our revenue went up. I wanna quit and I wanna pursue this. And he says, this is gonna be the biggest mistake of your life. I do remember Carter quitting his job and his professor being like, are you sure you wanna do this? You could really make a difference in this field. That is a blip in the radar, that is noise. You cannot count on that. It's gonna go up and right back down and you're not gonna make any more money. You were meant for way greater than this. Like I think it just added more fuel to the fire for him. And so that day I quit. And by the time I quit, we were already 
at 200,000 subscribers. As soon as I landed back home, moving back in with my parents after college, we woke up every day, we worked every waking second. If we weren't sleeping, we were YouTubing. We did that every single day over the course of the year, and we ran 100 miles an hour to make sure that we were gonna be successful. I really wanted to prove my boss that this is really something. Some point over the course of the year, I wanted to recruit help. This is where Liz came into the picture. She was wrapping up her first year at LinkedIn. In August, we filmed the Share the Love Music video. After that video came out, I quit my job. My entire story with YouTube begins when I met Steven, Carter, and Liz at a 4th of July party in 2017. Steven had just started his channel, Carter and Liz were helping him out, and I think they had around 80,000 subscribers, something in that ballpark. So I told them I would do anything I can to be a part of this thing. I'll work for free, I'll make any piece of content they want, whatever they want me to do, I'll do it. Our biggest ambitious goal as a trio was to come out with a music video. It was kind of like the trend at the time, everybody's making diss tracks and music videos, so we wanted to make one branded on Share the Love. This is the first project that we recruited outside help. We found Stove, Ryan, and Hunter for this project. They all kind of joined roughly around the same time. First project I ever made on YouTube was Steven's Share the Love music video. That video is so viral that it still blows my mind. It has like 160 million views. That was the first video I ever put on the internet, ever. And we made this music video. Everyone thought it was gonna be super cringy. It ended up being super fun and going absolutely berserk. It's an official platinum record at this point at over 150 million views on the video alone. So that blows up and then we just grind it pretty much after that. It was really like video after video after video. Since then, I have not taken a step outside of YouTube. That has been my life. Every single day has been something regarding YouTube for years now, probably six, seven years. The first year of being a full-time YouTuber, we made five videos a week, every week over the course of the year without a single miss. I always did all the pre-production and post-production stuff. I got them their first brand deal. I also set up their merch store. And everything kind of became a blur from that point. I was finishing college. Carter and Liz and Steven flew me out to help them make other YouTube videos. Sometimes we would fly back and land at 2 a.m., have no video for the next day, film from 4 to 6 a.m., edit from 6 to 11, post and pass out and do it all again tomorrow. And it was really fun too. It was so cool to like just dive into a world that you know nothing about. And then Carter started his channel. I would go to class during the day, edit until 4 in the morning for Steven's YouTube channel. At some point, Carter launched a channel and I edited his first video on his channel. It was at that point I decided I wanted to create my own channel so I can further lean into my own interests and let my brother do the same on his own. We were able to leverage a lot of the success from Steven's channel right into mine so we can kind of just pick it up where we left off. When we were on Steven's channel, it was very it was very frustrating because while it was his channel, like his name, it was a group effort. So Carter starts his channel and then I started mine a few months after. We opened the Lizzie channel. And again, that was a huge smashing success and a channel for her to focus kind of her interests. I think it was like when I started my channel is when really when we brought you guys on. Because I remember Stove, I found him through Upwork and I would message him and be like, can you edit videos for, I think it was for Carter's channel first. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> my actual name is Steven Cho. And what do people know you as? Stove like the kitchen appliance. So I first started off with the team as an editor. Liz was actually the one that hired me as Carter's main editor. At the time, he was he was making like pancake art challenges, huge Nerf guns, RC cars and whatnot. Moved in with him back in Virginia. That's basically where I kind of joined a team and slowly became a character in the videos. Carter, I was like, how can I take the stresses off Carter? And how can we have more time to make the videos we enjoy making? Mm -hmm. That's why I hired Stove was like, I knew that editing was very time consuming. Stove was great because he was so fast, like he's so efficient. And from that point on, I branched off from my brother. I moved out of the house, out of the state. We moved all the way across the country. Carter, Liz, and Steven were separating. I don't know why, I don't know the drama. It's because we realized that it was a real struggle to work with Steven, really, really hard. Me and my brother are extremely different people and very different interests, and we're both very strong leaders, hence why at some point, I think we had this big natural split. That's part of what kicked off 
the move to go to California. That was my interest, my passion, something I wanted to explore, and this was my time for that. At the time, we were also making a movie project called Vlog the Movie. Oh I didn't my have- God, the movie. I forgot I about have, the movie. It's just the worst title of all time, and I totally regret titling it that. But that movie got a ton of views. It was on Carter's channel. Me and three of my friends wrote, directed, edited, acted in this movie alongside Carter and Liz. We moved all the way across the country over to LA, and that's when like Dream Team officially launched. And it was me, Liz, Stove, Ryan. We moved into the first house in West Hollywood, California. It was this white mansion. It looked just like the previous Team 10 house. It was actually run under, under the same landlord. I was like, that's crazy. The rent is so expensive. Like he wanted to make it work. And I was like, okay, I'm down. Like if you think we can do it, let's, let's do it. Unofficially, the, the Dream Team house, that was kind of our placeholder name before we even launched Team RAR. I remember Carter, Hunter, and Liz were like, hey, let's just drive around. We drove by the now first Team R house. So they're like, yeah, you're probably gonna live in it. I'm like, what? <laughs> Guys, this is a prank where I said something. I think they turned off the camera. No, legit, we're, we just signed uh, the lease like yesterday and we got the keys. I fly back home to New York where I'm from. Well, we finished editing the movie and I thought that was the end of my YouTube career because I thought I didn't have a plan. I didn't know what was next. And then Liz calls me up one day. She says, hey, so uh, are you gonna come out to LA and work with us? And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you should come out because we're gonna keep doing this thing. The most casual, like, so are you moving across the country with us or not? <laughs> I guess like I just thought you were. I, I thought everyone was coming I was with down us. to. I was like, that's the call. I got the call. Two days later, I'm on a plane. I booked a ticket. I only had a suitcase. Back into the grind. We were living in this building that we called Flores. Little square looking modern box house. But this is where me and Liz started. We had the channels. Ryan on post and production and planning. We had Stove as our primary editor. We had Hunter. He was running brand management and business operations. And we all lived in the same house together. We had multiple rooms. We were living in this Mick mansion. We were living the dream out in California. It was such an incredible time looking back. So we all went to LA and we were making the most ridiculous, fun, crazy videos. There was a ton of growth and we all became best friends and filmed together all the time. And this is also the same house where we launched Ryan's channel, Stove's channel. The first year, I, I will say it was fun, but it was like nonstop filming. Roughly around that time, I think that's when Ryan started a channel as well. I had enough of working for somebody else because at the time I would do anything Carter and Liz needed. I would hire people, fire people. I would be in videos. I would help edit videos. I would help edit thumbnails. I would do anything that they needed, but I hated working for other people. Liz was supportive. Stove was super supportive. Carter challenged me being like, you're not going to do that. There's no way. The moment he said that, I was like, I'm doing it. I just like any channel we created was just like, who can hit the 100,000 subscribers the fastest? All of our channels were going up. Everyone was making more and more money. Everyone was having more and more success. Everything was just blowing up. I felt like everything we filmed and touched was just turning to gold. And there was no weekends for us. Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. For a whole year, I think, we just literally just grinded. Hundreds of videos. That year in that house has to be one of the most chaotic times of my entire life. I had a ton of friends who lived in LA, but I don't remember really seeing any of them ever. It became unhealthy, but I don't think any of us really understood. We weren't exercising, barely getting out of the house unless you're going on a walk or you're filming outside. We all loved it. It was the it was so fun. It's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was stressful, but I had a lot of fun because you guys were there. Videos are so fun to watch, but they are so challenging to put together. Like looking back, I couldn't replicate that setup that we had, if, even if I tried. I think what we were able to do at that time was truly remarkable. And then this was also kind of like when the last challenges started coming out. So then we started doing so many of those. Three-story Lego house that we did in the backyard. That went like mega viral. Lego boat, the underwater house project was just awesome. My first video that did really well was either the video where I walk through a car wash on foot and get destroyed by the car wash, or it was we hired like a little Kung Fu kid and he beat the crap out of me. Everything we did was for content. I feel like we did a lot of boyfriend, girlfriend content then. I tried to make content that I wanted to happen in real life with him asking me to be his girlfriend. It's not like he actually came up with that idea and asked me to be his girlfriend. It's like all of that was like so scripted. The intense focus I put to YouTube came first above everything for so many years. And we didn't really do a lot outside of work, go on dates and we would just talk about work. We have so many great memories and stuff. And it was so fun from real. So I was living in my little like fantasy world when I would make these videos of how I kind of wanted the relationship to be. And then we went through this like public breakup, which was partially real, but also not real. And then Bailey. And then Bailey came in. Wow, I totally forgot about this. I forgot about when we met Bailey. He came over to be Liz's 
X for the videos and then we all vibed with him. We all were like, dude, you're cool. And then yeah, and then Carter and Bailey became really close. He was just down and ready and just was it just meshed with our content style incredibly well. He did some of the most iconic things with us. That's when he jumped the uh, roof gap. Oh, that was crazy. That's when I knew this dude was crazy <laughs> in a good way. We filmed alongside for many years. Thinking back to like pre-Bailey, that seems crazy. It's the best. Like he's so funny. I love him. Oh, yeah. Wow, I like what you done with the place. Thanks. The first team of our house was, it was amazing. It was literally everything, but it was also small. And we used every corner and every square foot of that house from the floor to the rooftop. So of course I was always looking for the next step, something where we could stretch out a little bit more. Towards the end of the second year, I started browsing and the perfect opportunity for a massive mansion down the road in Bel Air popped up. I wanted to do something iconic and really surprise the team. So we hired movers to just empty the furniture out of the first First team or our house and not tell anyone and their goal was to have the team show up and have the house empty and just have them walk around and be like what is going on what is happening and then jump them in the car and drive them to the new house without them knowing anything carter says hey get in the car all four of us get in and they drive us over and they're like yeah we're just going to a, a set a location we're going to film a hide and seek video in and then they go this is the new house this is where we're going to film from now on this is where we're going to make content but i was so excited to show you guys too i was like this is crazy crazy and it's just the genuine reaction was great that was wild because that was a huge upgrade from the first team our house we get there we walk around it's this giant gorgeous mansion in the bel air hills and everyone's seeing the house the size the space the opportunity big green hedges giant white building huge pool tennis court we were paying 40k a month for this house and that was exciting it was like how can we make this bigger and better for everyone I'll give it to Carter, like he's a dreamer, like he dreams big and th I love that. It was pretty special. I, I feel like I really didn't keep it too well of a secret because it was a lot to coordinate, but uh, it was a pretty cool way to show the next chapter of Team RAR. We move in, we start filming, the machine is moving. We did everything. We did the trampoline towers. We flew Hunter's hoverboard for the first time on YouTube around there. A lot of our biggest videos were happening. We did basketball games with all the famous YouTubers in LA and other famous celebrities coming over almost daily. We threw some pretty cool parties there too, not gonna lie. We always had like a bunch of YouTubers. David Dobrik and his whole squad. Drew Dirksen and Britt come over. And ZHC was huge. Jojo, Caleb, Josh. And then the FaZe crew as well. All these random names that you might know. I start building my own team because my channel's doing well. I get people who can help me edit, help me shoot, help me ideate, help me film, hire actors, whatever it is. Stove starts building his team. Liz's team has already been built out. Carter has his own team. Delphine's a great time. Everyone's having a blast. Delphine. Why does it end? So Delphine's a great time, but I think this is when I was truly starting to get burnt out, I think, of like the type of content. I put content before not only myself, but before the people around me that I care about. Honestly, it really, really, really hurt some friendships that I really value and care about. That took years to kind of get back on track. Whoever I was dating at the time, I think I was trying to use demos content, not gonna lie. Something that I, I thought could work, but then, um, well, I'm single now, so. And then around that time, I think that's when Carter was like, thinking about moving, I think. Carter and Liz both, yeah. After two years at the second house and feeling like we kind of maxed out the size and the space, similar to what we did at the first house, the next step, I'm looking for more space. But because we have such big teams and we all start making bigger and bigger videos, everyone starts stepping on each other's toes a little more and people started to have a little bit more stress. They wanted more distance. One of the most challenging things in LA is simply just finding space. My content style from the very beginning was all about a large backyard with dirt bikes and ATVs, jet skis. LA just doesn't have it. Basically when they moved and I was doing my own thing, I think that's when Ryan was you were doing your own thing as well. Me and Stove, we've kind of put down roots in LA. We don't want to leave right away, so we stay. And I know Ryan and Stove initially were the two that wanted to hang back in LA. And so we kind of split at that point and we went separate ways. I think the first beginning of that 2022, I was still making enough to where I can cover costs and stuff, you know? But then I think I just felt discouraged because I didn't, I didn't have a team. I didn't have really anyone to like film with, to be honest. I kind of slowed way down. It was at this time a lot of team members cycled out. Some of our back-end post-production people left. Some of our supporting staff left. It was a lot of growing pains. We brought in a lot of people and then they left. And so it was just a lot of challenge. And again, all of these things got in the way of making content and it made things very challenging. Five months before Carter moved, I had made videos basically just by myself with my friends and my team. Tons of videos. We move into a much smaller house that's way less fun to film in just because there's like no space and everyone else is on their own journey. At some point during that stove also moved to the east coast 
and that's when I got hired and I was more of like a character on Carter's channel, Team RAR, and then also kind of doing some more like post-production stuff, behind the scenes stuff that you guys probably won't see. And at this point, this is where I made my big mistake and I let myself get burnt out and I creatively fell into the trap of making the same videos over and over and over. That's not a healthy relationship with content creation. So I also got kind of burnt out. So I slowed way down, slammed on the brake, and about a, ye a year and a half or two after they all moved to Raleigh, I moved out here about six months ago. Shortly after I moved out here, that's when Ryan joined, so it was like bringing the band back together. I think we we're still trying to stick to kids' content, challenge videos and whatnot. It wasn't the same as when it was back in LA. Carter and Liz were, were still together, I think. <laughs> I moved out here hoping that everything would be back to the way it was before. Everybody's best friends again. We're all making videos. We all had a break, but now let's get back into it. Hit the grind. It was also at this time where Liz and I, after having an eight year relationship, split ways. That was another huge change and another thing that took away from the content. We were so used to working together that working apart for the first time since literally the beginning was a huge challenge. And when I get out here, Carter and Liz are going through one of the worst breakups I've ever been around. Um, I'm not gonna really air that out either, but what it comes down to is it's years of people depending on each other. She was known as Carter's girlfriend, I think, for the longest time. She wanted to be her own person. Liz just felt undervalued, and I feel like she was being used. It didn't feel like a relationship, it felt more like a business relationship after a while, and I don't think like they were fulfilled because they didn't have the same unconditional love for one another. A piece of it was about work. A piece of it was about how can they capitalize on one another for their own careers. But it's like, you just gotta treat people with kindness and see them as people who are equal, not people who are tools. Both of them in their own way were brains of the operation, but Liz was the glue that kept us together for years. During the whole journey, Liz and I had such a close relationship. We were close personally. We were close during business. We worked together. We lived together. We quite literally did everything together. Our friends were the same. We were so closely intertwined because of the nature of our work and the nature of our business and life. It was kind of like ripping off a crazy band-aid and just revealing something that you didn't know was there. That's probably what broke Team Rar. So she went a whole different direction. She went, as you guys know, went more adult content and whatnot. So Team RAR as a business could not associate with Liz. This was the end of Team RAR. When they broke up, the entire team dynamic fell apart. There was no consistency. There was no us all supporting one another. It was, there were two teams and whose side were you on? After Carter and I broke up, I just felt extremely isolated and alienated from everyone on the team because I, I guess I just thought we were closer than that and I don't know it's just we weren't I guess and it kind of sucked because I spent so many years hanging out with you guys and just being around you guys that when we weren't filming videos together anymore it was like I was the odd one out, and I was the one who had to make the effort to hang out with you guys. Liz is one of the hardest working, fastest moving, high functioning people I've ever met. She's someone that really helped the entire operation in just every single facet of what we've ever done. She's also such a caring individual and such an incredible friend to her friends. She still means so much to me, um, but I think we are better off on our own journeys. And so with Liz, I will say I love her as a friend and I wish her the best in her career. She's paving her own way and I think she's finding herself. First of all, she's extremely kind to everybody around her. If you are a friend of hers or her family, I think she treats the people around her better than she treats herself sometimes, which is its own conversation and she needs to take better care of her own mental health. Liz is loyal beyond anyone I've ever met. She is so kind and so giving and great in every way. Ryan's just always been great. There are definitely times where we get mad at each other and we get, in, we get on each other's nerves. I mean, I love Ryan, he's so funny. He's just like a good time. Good time, Ryan. 
Ryan is, he's a funny one. He has always brought a goofy sense of humor. Him and his production style, and he's honestly just such a great time to be around. He really is just like he is on camera in real life. Um, no disrespect to Carter and Liz though. <laughs> Ryan is probably like, I would say, like one of my best friends that I could call, honestly, because like me and him vibe so well. He is now my current roommate, and I will say, Ryan is a great roommate. <laughs> I see Stove all the time. I'm his roommate, right? And I love Stove to death. Stove is one of the kindest, funniest. Nobody, dude, nobody makes me laugh the way that that guy makes me laugh. His approach to life is like live and just have fun. And <laughs> I don't know, I love the dude, the dude's great. If I had to describe Stove in one word, I will call him a hype beast. He has taught me so much when it comes to style and shoes and just honestly being cool. Stove is really a cool dude. He's an absolute blast to film with. He's such a great sport and he's always willing to give it his all. Stove, I feel like he's like kind of like a cousin to me where he he's just so funny and he's so like himself and he's so genuine and that's what i love about stove i wouldn't be here without carter if he hadn't hired me back in like 2018 i definitely wouldn't be here and be the person i am today i think the past year to be honest i think he's grown a lot i think he's kind of knowing more about what he wants to do and what his future looks like without liz i'm excited for carter finding what he loves and wants to do with his life. I'd like to think that he's a good person at heart. There were a lot of ups and downs. I do have really fond memories and I'm also still angry about stuff, but that'll kind of fade on its own, I'm sure. And he's a visionary. I've always told myself we're barely scratching the surface. And honestly, it feels like today is the beginning. I know there's an entire history behind us and it's an absolute just amazing. I get goosebumps thinking about it. But I kind of consider today day number one. With my channel now, I think I kind of want to just go back to, I'll, I'll probably do more gaming stuff again. Kind of do whatever I kind of feel like as well. Like YouTube won't be my main business and my main source of income now. My main focus now will be I'm opening up a Kumon franchise, which is a math and reading learning center for kids. I'm excited to open this up. I think for the first time in a couple years, I feel like I feel confident and happy and excited to to go on this venture. I mean, I'm just really proud of everyone. Nothing lasts forever. You know, all of us breaking off and doing our own thing, it was bound to happen. It was just a matter of when. I'm just proud of all the stuff we have been able to accomplish together. And I'm proud that we did make a big impact on so many people's lives in a good way, I'd like to think. I kind of want to do what my friends have been doing and take a big step back, look in and figure out what do I want to do with YouTube and content creation? What videos do I want to make? But I don't think we're all on the same path anymore. We will always be friends. Carter, Liz, Stove, I love you guys. If you're watching this, I have no idea if you'll see this. And I appreciate any of you who are tuning in for the first time. And I really appreciate any of you who have come through this journey with us because it has been an insane ride so far. And I still feel like we're just getting started, but we're getting started doing something else. <laughs> I know, I love you all. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was interesting. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening.